Committee. We have a very aggressive agenda today, as you can see by the crowd and the number of uh, projects that are out in the hallway. Uh, so we are here today to discuss the Community Preservation Act, specifically docket 0377, message in order approving an appropriation of $34,926,700. Uh, That's amazing uh, for the fiscal year. The round of applause for that one. That's a big one. For the fiscal year 2018 and fiscal year 2019, community preservation funds, revenues for community preservation projects at the recommendation of the City of Boston Community Preservation Committee, which is uh, that which I chair. I'm joined here by my colleague, City Councilor, in, as, the, as their arrival, um, City Councilor Ed Flynn and City Councilor Anissa Rasabi George, in that order. Other colleagues will be coming as well. Um, the purpose of this hearing is to consider funding approvals for the second round of projects seeking public funding from the community preservation across our city. The recommended projects come from a wide range of neighborhoods. Uh, specifically, the CPC is recommending the following. 18 million uh, plus in affordable housing projects, a total of 10 projects. Um, 8 million in historic preservation projects, totaling 20 projects. Uh, and 8.6 in recreational use and open space projects, totaling 26 projects. We are joined today uh, by uh, members of the administration, Emma Handy, uh, who's the city CFO, as well as Christine Poff, the director of community preservation. I know that uh, we may also be joined by uh, Aldo uh, Guerin uh, and Jessica Boatwright. Uh, Aldo is the senior planner for the Parks Department, filling in uh, for our chief, and also Jessica is the deputy director of the city's uh, neighborhood development. So, um, um, so that said, I know uh, would like to try to get into it just because we have so many projects. Unless my colleagues have a quick opening, uh, Chair, recognize Councilor Anise Rasabi, George. Just a quick opening, um, Chairman Flaherty, if you don't mind. Um, I'm really excited about what we're going to be looking at today. Very excited to support this. I think that this presentation is going to go smoothly. I just got um, accosted by a resident saying I didn't support one of the projects, and I had to. Sh I said to her, "I go. We don't sign on to these. We wait until you're here, um, and then we. I think we'll support today with." Um, with great excitement and certainly celebration. Christine, thank you for your, all of your hard work and Emmy for uh, getting us to this point and this, I, I think, you know, a celebration that's flowed in from the mezzanine, from the, from the hallway here with all the presentations and what a lovely thing that was to, to showcase all of the projects or most of the projects we'll be looking at today. I am, I have open house at my, or parent, it's not even open house because it's teacher conversations at my boys' school. So I'm gonna be sneaking out in a minute. Uh, but I am excited about all of these, um, all of these projects and really thrilled that we're uh, utilizing this, the CPA funds um, to do some great things across our city and our, in our neighborhoods in so many different ways. It, the creativity in this package, what we saw outside, not creativity, but the sort of the differences in project type and the ways that these investments will be used to improve our communities across our city. Uh, it, it's very special and I'm very excited about it. And thank you for everyone who's here today for the work that it took to get to this point and your presentations. I know it wasn't easy because we heard from lots of you along the way. Um, and Christine, thank you for your leadership and that of the CPC committee. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Asabi George. And that's a great point because we get asked, all of our colleagues get asked to sign on to support. And given that we're the body that has to uh, give the approvals, uh, members of the committee as well as the entire council, we always feel that it would, to, to some degree, should have come to be, be a conflict. Uh, and so we're always trying to stay in our lane as the uh, overseeing and approving body. So for those that have asked their local or at large district or at large council to sign on, uh, to it and they haven't, uh, that's actually a good thing. That's how we get ourselves in trouble uh, in government. So uh, don't take that personal. Uh, get your advocacy letters, get your letters of support from folks in the community, the neighborhood, who we all know, and then get them submitted and get them into Christine and her team to be fully vetted. And then we obviously have that uh, last opportunity to ask these questions and to uh, submit uh, approval letters uh, on their behalf. So that's a great point. Uh, Council Flynn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I just want to say thank you to, to you, uh, Councillor Flaherty, for your leadership working closely with Christine and her team, and also to, um, to Mayor Walsh as well for his strong leadership and working closely with the Council on this important program. I know it benefits so many neighborhoods across the city, and 
Uh, that's what's great about Boston, is everybody working together to make our neighborhoods better, vibrant, stronger. And so we have a good team here, and so I'm proud to, proud of the work that you've done, uh, Mr. Chairman, but also proud of the work that Christine has done in, in the mayor's team as well. So I'm, I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Council Finn. And we're also been joined by our colleague, City Councilor Kim Janey. Any opening comments, Kim? Uh, I'll just add to the chorus of thank yous. Um, so my colleagues have been thanked, um, certainly you, Christine, and your team. But I, I want to acknowledge the engagement um, that this initiative has really brought to our city. Not that we needed CPA to bring engagement. The Boston is a very active, uh, engaged uh, city, and we're better for that. And so I want to thank all of the folks that are here in this chamber and all those who could not come uh, in the middle of the day to City Hall, but just thank you for caring about our communities uh, and for being part of this process. Um, I'm excited to, to, to get into it, so thank Very you. Very good. Thank you, Councilor Janey. So with that, uh, Emma, you can uh, start the Great. discussion. Thank you, Councilor Flaherty and members of the Boston City Council. I'm Emma Handy. I'm the Chief Financial Officer for the City of Boston. I will be very brief uh, because I am here today with the city's expert on all things community preservation um, and also with many other community experts who have thoroughly packed this room. And so I know you want to hear from them and not so much from me. Um, but I do want to say that I'm here in support of um, the community preservation program, the work that Christine and her team have done. Um, she works very closely with uh, the administration and finance cabinet and many other city departments, including uh, landmarks, parks, housing, and, and many others. So it is uh, a collaborative effort across the city, as well as engagement with your offices. And so we appreciate that um, in the collaboration and the spirit of helpfulness that we have experienced in standing up a program from scratch, which has been really wonderful. Um, Due to the leadership and support of the mayor, members of this city council, uh, businesses, residents, and our voters, Boston passed the Community Preservation Act in 2016. Since we have implemented it, the city has collected over $40 million in revenue from the 1% surcharge that uh, is added onto our property tax bills. This funding is available to support, to support affordable housing, historic preservation, and open space and public recreation projects. All of these projects would not otherwise happen without the support of CPA funding, and that's a very important thing to highlight about the, the amazing projects that you'll hear about today. During the spring 2018 pilot round, $8 million in funding was awarded to 35 projects acro across 21 neighborhoods. And in this round that's here, here before you today, the CPC has recommended 56 projects for just over $34 million, and it spans 21 of Boston's neighborhoods again. $18.1 million for affordable housing, $8.2 million for historic preservation, $8.6 million for open space and public re recreation. The $34 million comes from both FY18 and FY19 reserves, so I think it's important to note that this year, that this round of um, recommendations from the CPC is a little bit of an outlier because it's basically the culmination of two years of accumulating C CPA revenue, um, and so it allowed us to do a really big round um, and think about then what the, the next future rounds look like. We expect somewhere between 20 to $25 million annually in revenue for the CPA going forward. Between both funding rounds, almost 50% of CPA funding was awarded to affordable housing projects and 25% each for historic preservation and open space. As a result of the Mayor and the City Council's leadership on the CPA, we have set up a transparent, community-driven process for awarding CPA grants. This process engages our nonprofits, community organizations, and residents, encouraging them to come up with creative ideas and solutions for the needs in their neighborhoods. This process is unique to Boston. Other communities in the Commonwealth have reached out to Boston for guidance, and Christine specifically, about how to replicate our process and have used ours as a model for theirs. It is something we're proud of and look forward to continuing to partner with the City Council on as we move forward. I want to thank you, and I will turn it over to Christine, and we'll uh, be here to answer any questions that you have. Very good. Thank you, Emma. Welcome, thank Christine. You. So I just want to start, my team keeps getting recognized. First, I'm Christine Poff, the Director of Community Preservation for the City of Boston. And my team kept, keeps getting recognized, but I want to um, thank and appreciate Thadine Brown and Allison Quinn, who are somewhere in the room. Raise your hands, because they've done a lot of work. And I also want to thank the district counselors. We did ask every applicant to submit um, a letter supporting um, or a project in their district that came in, and especially Councilor Janey, who had many, many, many to write. And so we're very appreciative of that. We wanted district counselors to know what the projects were, and that seemed like the best way to encourage that conversation between applicants. 
So as Emma said, we our first round was last spring and when we were here before the council um, for $8 million and 35 projects. That round had an application limit of half a million dollars. We, um, the second round, we rolled right into a second round very quickly, partly in order to um, be, coincide with the housing, um, the D&D's housing projects, because we knew we wanted to prioritize affordable housing this time. And so we elevated the um, amount that applicants could apply for to a million dollars, and some, you will note, are over a million dollars, because it's very hard to build new affordable housing, and we wanted to support that. The reason for that priority was because um, in our round last spring, we were only able to fund three housing projects um, and compared to uh, you know well over 10 historic preservation and parks department projects each. For this round, um, we announced the, um, the application at the end of the summer and had a deadline in September. We met with many applicants um, through the spring and summer last year to help them with their application. We had information sessions, we had office hours and encouraged people to come in and get help and assistance with their application. We ended up with 140 eligible eligibility forms. Of these, 88 were ready to do a full application. Those that weren't, they just did not meet eligibility under the state law, and others were just in the beginning of figuring out their project and were not quite ready to proceed, but we expect many of those to come to us going forward. Um, we have done, as CPA staff, we really committed to doing community outreach and have been in all 23 neighborhoods. We've attended civic association meetings. We've organized CPA forums. We work with city council and office of neighborhood services to help residents and community organizations learn about CPA's possibilities. Every neighborhood in Boston has had at least one project funded if we combine the spring pilot and the fall funding round for these fiscal year 18 and 19 funds. The projects recommended to you today, as Emma noted, have been vetted by many different city agencies with a touchstone in the neighborhoods. Department of Neighborhood D Development, Boston Parks Department, Boston Public Schools, Boston Public Library, Boston Landmarks Commission, Boston um, Planning and Development Agency, uh, and other agencies. Um, and they're all aligned with the Boston 2030 and other city plans. These 56 projects will transform neighborhoods, green spaces, historic buildings, and help residents stay in their homes and their communities. New parks will be created, children will get new playgrounds. Some of those children are here today. <laughs> um, greenways will be developed to link residents to parks and tea stations. Degraded open spaces will be renovated and trees will be planted. A large waterfront park will be raised literally elevated to help prevent sea level rise and flooding throughout the North End and downtown. CPA funds will build more than 190 affordable housing units, although that number will be verified by Jessica, who's here. Um, additional housing will be taken off the market to be preserved as affordable, allowing tenants to stay in their homes. CPA is funding this significant anti-displacement tool to great applause from community members and neighborhoods. Another 70 first-time homeowners will receive down payment assistance with CPA funds. Historic properties, the last remaining mansion in Roxbury, home to the National Center for Afro-American Artists. Churches that serve as neighborhood centerpieces and a floating museum will be restored. Sites on the Freedom Trail, sites out in many of our neighborhoods, a former church will be saved from demolition and transformed into affordable housing. These are some of the projects presented to you today. Anticipating some of your questions, potentially, I want to talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing going forward. We will be taking the spring off, although we hope to eventually get to a place where we can do two rounds of funding a year. We just need um, time to um, both help and support organizations that may apply and also organize our systems. Our committee is new and fresh and wants to spend some time with some more training for them and some more evaluation about the guidelines that they want to create for projects. So we will do another round of funding. We'll announce it this summer and it will again follow the fall cycle. Um, we, we do anticipate more discussion around um, preservation properties, public benefit, and other issues that we're facing. And 
Oh, and we anticipate in fiscal year 2020 to collect about $25 million that will be distributed in, in one or two funding rounds, um, as I described. We do um, hope very much that um, a, a bill that was is heavily supported by the mayor, and we hope that we'll get support from others in this room, will elevate the state match that comes um, this year, it would have been 11% of a state match. We ended up with 19% because there were extra funds from the governor that he put into the Community Preservation Trust, but we would love to get that match up to 50% because um, that would make a huge difference to Boston and the affordable housing, the open spaces, and the historic preservation that we could do with CPA. That's all. Thank you so much Very again. Good. Thank you, uh, Christine. We've also been joined by our colleagues, uh, City Councilor uh, Josh Zakem is here, and, uh, and a special note, it's the very first visit <laughs> to know. City Hall in the Chamber by Baby Leo Zakem. So <laughs> welcome to Baby Leo Zakem. We've also been joined by my colleague and Council President Andrea Campbell. Um, I guess the quick question before we move forward, just want to do just a quick housekeeping. Sure. Based on the previous grantees, have, have, every, have they all received their checks? So no, um, all except for three have received their first check. Um, we have a process in place and we, um, we are treating that first check like a grant so that they, because um, many of them are small organizations and need money upfront to get started. And then following that first check, we have a compliance system in place where they will, um, they have to submit, they have to show that they've spent that money and then they get a next installment. And they can get up to three installments with 10% held until the project is finished. And the three projects that have not received funding yet, um, we're, wait we're still waiting on paperwork for them and we're calling them regularly and nudging them okay. and trying to finalize the contracting process. Those projects, um, we're not quite as shovel ready as we uh, we had hoped, and they had hoped, and so that's why I think there just is not a big rush to okay. do that. Very good. Well, if you can just stay on them and uh, yeah, and get them will. to be completed, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. uh, and so with that, I know that you had submitted some time-sensitive matters, and then we're asking folks to try to be as uh, as brief and succinct yeah. as possible as a professional courtesy to uh, mm -hmm. the other applicants as well as my colleagues with any prospective questioning. So. Uh, with that, we're going to get right into it. Um, uh, Mike Nichols, uh, Beacon Hill, uh, Esplanade Trees, are you here? And the folks, the way it's going to work is we have alternating microphones, so as you hear your name call, wherever microphone's closer to you, just jump into it. So, and then, uh, um, welcome. Councilor, do you have the list of um, some folks who need to leave early? Yes, I have Great. the time-sensitive ones that are right here. Wonderful. Right. Thank you. Welcome, Mike. Thank you, Councilor Flaherty, for hearing from me gonna... today. I, I have to interrupt again. I'm so sorry. But first, we were going to hear from Housing and Parks. All right, so, all right, so we, no, to, just stay there, Mike. Just give you a testimony, and then we'll Perfect. shift. Okay. Sorry about right. that, Mike. No problem. So uh, thank you, Councillor Flaherty, for both hearing from me today and your leadership in bringing this before the Council. I'm honored to, uh, to represent the first of a number of great projects that you'll hear about today. Uh, my name is Michael Nichols. I represent the Esplanade Association. Um, the uh, CPA funds uh, towards our uh, application for a renewed Esplanade tree planting project will support the first major planting initiative on the Charles River in Esplanade since the 1950s, restoring the park's original design and ensuring a healthy tree canopy for decades to come. The first phase will result in scores of new and healthier trees to mitigate climate change effects, fortify against river pollution, support urban wildlife, filter air for breathing, and provide shade in both physical and mental health benefits for city residents and visitors. We're grateful for the Preservation Committee's support, particularly Christine and her staff, to the mayor's recommendations, and we hope the council uh, will join the Esplanade Association in addressing the city's overall goal to grow the healthy tree canopy in Boston to the benefit of, of us all, and we thank our, our city, district city councilor, Josh Aikum, for his support as well. Thank you. Thank you, Michael, and that is the model of testimony that we would appreciate, uh, that's, so that's great. So. Uh, with that, Aldo and Jessica, can you come down and just have a seat right next to uh, your counterparts in government? Right here. So f following Michael Nichols' lead, you can uh, go ahead. Good afternoon, Jessica. City Councilors. I'm Jessica Boatwright. I'm the Deputy Director for Neighborhood Housing Development at the Department of Neighborhood Development. I'm going to try to model that, but I, I have to talk about the whole housing portfolio, so I might take one extra minute, but hopefully not, not another. Yep. So I just want to start by saying that DND is really enthusiastic about Mayor Walsh and the Community Preservation Committee's housing recommendations this funding round. 
CPA housing funding in this round is distributed across the three focus areas identified in the Mayor's Housing and Changing City Boston 2030 plan. In terms of the, the first focus area, production, proposed funds will support new construction of over 407 units, 162 of which will be affordable to low-income Bostonians. In terms of preservation, the proposed funding for the city's acquisition opportunity program will provide an invaluable opportunity to preserve affordable rental units um, off of the speculative market. And in terms of the production focus area, or sorry, the protection focus area, proposed funding to support income qualified first time home buyers will allow people to build wealth in the communities that they care about. These investments support the mayor and the Community Preservation Committee's interest in fighting displacement by creating more opportunities for Bostonians to live in homes that they can afford. It's important to note that before going to the committee this year, the housing production projects <coughs> underwent significant review by the Department of Neighbor Development staff. Professional underwriting staff analyzed the strengths of the project's development team experience, financial models, the overall feasibility of the proposed projects, and the design in terms of both livability and impact on the local neighborhood. CPA funding is gonna be invested in, or is proposed to be invested in 10 projects spread across five Boston neighborhoods, as well as two citywide initiatives. I know that the developers of the eight individual production projects will be speaking to you today, but I want to mention that the $9.3 million proposed to be invested will be invested in eight new housing developments. Within these developments, there'll be 38 new home ownership units, affordable home ownership units, something which CPA is really uniquely um, designed to support, which is really fantastic. 13 affordable home ownership units with a preference for artists. 107 new units of affordable senior supportive housing and 13 units for formerly homeless households. The preservation funding, the second focus area of funding uh, is for a citywide initiative, the Acquisition Opportunity Program. Five million dollars will be invested in a program that enables qualified developers to purchase homes off of the private market and preserve their affordability by deed restricting the units. And then the final area of funding in the, product, the protection area is for a second citywide initiative which will provide enhanced down payment assistance to home buyers. $3.7 million in funds will help approximately 70 first time low and moderate income home buyers purchase homes in Boston's neighborhoods. This is an exciting and impactful set of projects and the developers and partners represented here today are capable, skilled, and can responsibly execute these projects as important examples of what CPA means for our city. Thank you very much, Jessica. Aldo, welcome. Good morning, uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm gonna talk about the uh, six projects that the uh, Parks Department uh, proposed and uh, we've been uh, granted funding for. Uh, first one is Garvey, uh, Garvey Playground in Dorchester. This project will pr transform a problem space within Garvey Playground by introducing a positive activity generating use. Parks is partnering with DCR to create a dog park in a currently misused portion of the park while also improving entrances and access between the two jurisdictionally different but functionally connected portions of Garvey Playground. While this improvement is beyond the scope of the original Garvey Playground re renovation project, it's working closely with park constituents and the state. We've identified a way to use the CPA funds to extend uh, the positive impact of a comprehensive park renovation into this problem part of the park. Um, we're gonna be uh, receiving uh, $790,000 from CPA for that. Geneva Avenue Park in Dorchester, there we're gonna be partnering with the Trust for Public Land to create a new park in the heart of Grove Hall. We're gonna be engaging neighborhood residents, Burke High School students, and numerous community groups to envision the future of this neighborhood park. At the completion of the CPA funded project phase, we'll have a community informed schematic design and cost estimate to advance into final design and fundraising for construction. Um, the CPA funds we'll be receiving is $140,000. Langone and Popolo Parks in the North End um, are the only parks in the North End with an athletic field facility. And it's a key public access point to the waterfront. This pub, this, the CPA funding request will allow for a significant grade change as part of the renovation of the park, raising park features above projected flood levels 
and preventing floodwaters from extending into the neighborhood upland of the, from the park. Strategies include raising the Harbor Walk seed wall, building a secondary interior wall for additional height, and strategically raising park elements. We're going to be receiving $1 million in CPA funds for this uh, project. Paula Titus Park in Roxbury is a former DND owned parcel that was transferred to parks as a first step to creating a new park in the Highland Park neighborhood of Roxbury. CPA funding will enable parks to design the space so it be can become a valued open space amenity in Fort Hill. Community, design, excuse me, community engagement in the design process is a given. Improvements appropriate to this small space may include seating, pathways, possibly a small place structure, gathering space, and plantings. Uh, we'll be receiving $35,000 from CPA for that. Peters Park uh, is a, a CPA request um, providing gap funding for park improvements for this South End Park. We're currently par partnering with neighborhood groups to make strategic improvements to Peters Park to address longstanding deficiencies or deteriorating park conditions in this heavily used and much beloved space. The CPA improved improvements, funded improvements, include installation of a stone dust pass along a desired line between Washington Street and Shawmut Avenue, expansion of the irrigation system to improve lawn conditions, and installation of shade shelters and a batting cage for little league use. Uh, we'll be uh, using 146,000 in CPA funds for that project. And finally, Walker Playground. Uh, due to strong community interest, Parks proposes to add the to the renovation of um, the children's play area. We'll be adding renovation of the natural grass playing area and the new perimeter parks pa pathways to the scope of the uh, project. This expanded scope will elevate the quality of the entire park, providing park users improved recreational amenities for fitness activities and organized sports. This will advance the cause of equity in active living opportunities. Thank you, uh, Al Joy. Thank we you. appreciate your time and attention as well as yours, Jessica. Um, we've also been joined by our colleague, uh, City Council Michelle Wu. So uh, believe it or not, we've got seven down. Uh, didn't even know that, huh? Thank you. So we're going to get right into the those that have some time sensitivities. BPS Early Learning Center, uh, the BPS Early Center, Learning Center playground. If you could come down to um, where, I, where you're coming from, if you can take this very first microphone, followed by Grace Apartments, are going to be at that microphone. Followed by Charles River Speedway at that microphone. Followed by Bartlett Station, Lot D at that microphone. Welcome. If you could state your name and affiliation for the record, and you have the floor. I'm a parent at the East Boston Early Education Center. I'm here with Ms. Kelsey, one of our kindergarten teachers, and a K-0 student, Pablo, and a K-2 student, Maite. Um, okay. Thank you, Councilor Flaherty, and uh, thank you, Christine, and everybody at the, at the CPA. Uh, the East Boston Early Education Center is an inclusive early education school. Although we have ample outer space, most of it is covered in concrete, and there is one small older place structure that is not accessible to all our students. Accidents are frequent, and our facilities are not meeting the, the safety and development needs of our young students, especially our students with disabilities, because we are an inclusion school. The CPA award will be used to create an outer space that is fun, safe, accessible and furthers the mission, our mission of growing the hearts and minds of all our students. Uh, this space will be benefit not just the EC community, but the whole East Boston community as well. And I'd also like to take a moment to thank uh, City Council Lydia Edwards and um, State Representative Adrian Madaro who have supported this project all along. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time and attention and for filling out the um, Maite, did you want to say why you want a playground? Oh, she was ready to testify, but got shy now. She can have the playground as long as she doesn't run against any of us. That's all we're working Okay. <laughs> you don't want to say why you want the playground? Thank you. No? Thank okay, you. let's go. You have, you have the floor. Good afternoon. 
Thank you, Councillor Flaherty and members of City Council. Uh, my name is Kara Anderson. I'm here representing uh, the Architectural Heritage Foundation. We are the proponents of the Charles River Speedway project in Brighton. And I just wanted to take a moment to thank Councillor Siomo and his office um, for all of their support over the past four years that we've been working on this project. Um, and I'd like to thank Representative Mike Mor Michael Moran as well. Um, as I mentioned, I'm from the Architectural Heritage Foundation. We are a 501c3 located right here in Boston at the old City Hall. And, um, and we are uh, proposing to uh, convert the Charles River Speedway into a mixed retail and commercial destination for the community. Um, CPA funds will help to install ADA compliant ramps and decking throughout the Charles River Speedway um, as part of the full re rehabilitation of this cherished yet rapidly deteriorating historic site. These additions will bring the complex up to code and ensure that it is welcoming and accessible to all future patrons, employees, and community members. With CPA support, the Speedway will once again become a treasured community gathering place and way station for people enjoying the neighborhood and exploring the Charles River. Uh, thank you again for your time and appreciate the opportunity to be here. Very good, thank you very much for your time. Hal called already, you've never been shy. What happened to you, we skipped over you. <laughs> Grace Apartments. Just Welcome. made it. <laughs> Welcome back, Al. Well, as you know, the CPA funds will be used to finance the development of 42 units of housing, affordable apartment housing in a building in Maverick Square. It is now a parking lot behind an existing building. And the significance of this is that the existing building was renovated 50 years ago, it's, it's the oldest commercial building in East Boston, and there were 17 elderly housing units in that building. And our whole goal was to save those 17 affordable units. But in order to do that, we needed to build more affordable units. And it's been like a wonderful gold mine for the CDC and for the uh, community, because now instead of having 17 units, affordable units, we're gonna end up with over 50 affordable units. And these affordable senior units will be something that is so well needed in East Boston because you know what's happening with the rising rents and our rent rolls are so exorbitant with the, everything that's happening here. So this has been fantastic for us. And we thank you and thank everyone for the ability to get this project done. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Thank you for the great work you do in East Boston on Thank the affordable you. housing and community stuff. We got Bartlett Station, Marcella Path, Union United, St. James Church, and Orion Heights Park. If you can just kind of start to gravitate towards the microphone. Good Welcome afternoon, councilors. Thank you very much for Good to see you. Um, giving, giving us this time and supporting this project. My name is Roger Brown. I'm the managing director of real estate at Preservation of Affordable Housing. Uh, POA is excited to use the CPA funds in the construction of Bartlett Station Lot D. Lot D will provide 52 high new quality rental housing units specifically programmed and designed and built for Boston's aging population. The project will serve a wide variety of residents from the most vulnerable to longtime neighborhood residents interested in downsizing. Ultimately, Residents will find a home at Lot D and within the Greater Bartlett Station where they can age in place and in their community. Thank you to District Councilor Kim Janey for her early support, as well as Councilor Edwards, Chair of the Committee on Housing and Community Development, and thank you all. Thank you, Roger. Kathy, welcome back. How are you? Great. Thank you very much. Just Great to be here. Affiliation for the record, and you have the floor, Kathy. I'm Kathy Cotteridis. I'm Executive Director of Historic Boston Incorporated, a nonprofit organization that redevelops historic buildings for new uses. Um, we will be using CPA funds to support acquisition costs and stabilization measures for the former 1910 St. James African Orthodox Church in Roxbury, an historic structure that was threatened last year with demolition but will be redeveloped by Historic Boston with input from the Highland Park neighborhood uh, for affordable rental units on the lower level and co-working space for entrepreneurs, creatives, and artists on the second floor, which is the sanctuary of the church. We're grateful to the CPA Selection Committee for their recommendation of support, to the diligent staff of CPA for their guidance, and to you, the entire city council, and particularly to Councilor Janey, our district city councilor, for your support, 
for this important funding source and all the good that it's doing for the quality of life in our city. And thank you very much for your attention to this and your oversight, but more specifically, thank you for supporting historic preservation and the redevelopment of great places like this through this program. Thank you, Kathy, and thank you for the great work that you do as well. Uh, well good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Dubard from uh, New Urban Collaborative. Uh, and I just want to say that we're really honored to be considered, especially seeing the work that's out there in the hallway. Um, we intend to use the funds to build a community stair and pavilion in the Highland Park area of Roxbury, specifically between Marcella, Beach Glen, and Thwing Streets. Um, outside of providing a valuable gathering and community space in the pavilion, the stair will offer a much needed connection from Beach Glen to Marcella Streets. Uh, both will include public art, environmental, and, and historic information all directly related to the neighborhood, Highland Park and Fort Hill. Um, I just want to firstly thank Councillor Janey for your support of this and for your work on so many other grassroots, ground level stuff, um, and to Fadine and Christine for all of their amazing work with the CPA. Uh, thanks very much. Very good. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you, District Councilors. Thank you, CPA staff. My name is Sienna DeSantis, and I'm here representing Orient Heights Park in East Boston. The Orient Heights Park project will bring much needed public open space to the Orient Heights neighborhood in East Boston in conjunction with the redevelopment of 331 state-aided public housing units um, owned by the Boston Housing Authority. This project will that is currently underway, this project will play a key role in connecting the public housing community to the surrounding neighborhood. For over 50 years, this 14-acre site has experienced isolation due to its steep topography and architectural variance from the surrounding homes. Once complete, the Orient Heights Park will not only provide a much-needed um, asset to the residents of the community today, but also be a destination point for all neighbors to enjoy. I'd like to thank our elected officials for their continued support of the Orient Heights Project, as well as um, Councillor Edwards for her support of this park and Representative Madaro. Thank you. Thank you, Sienna. Appreciate your testimony. Hi, Kyle. How are you? Ah, very well, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Flaherty and City Council. Uh, my name is Carl Long, a resident of the South End and member of Union Church, and I'm here with uh, Phyllis. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Phyllis Galloway, trustee at Union. Hi, Phyllis. Welcome. And Ruth Brown, trustee Hi, Ruth. at Union. Welcome, Ruth. Great, and we are we are very grateful to the support from Councillor Janie, Janie for supporting this, this application. And the people of Union are excited to, uh, to be using these community preservation funds to complete necessary accessibility uh, features, including the uh, introduction of a wheelchair lift to make our 1872 historic architectural gem in the South End accessible at all levels to, to people with, with all abilities. And our 147-year-old building is home to many neighborhood programs. Uh, and it's also home to a historically African American uh, congregation that has provided transfer, transfer, uh, sorry, transformational leadership um, since 1796. We are an economically diverse, LGBT com affirming community committed to unconditional love, community service, and social justice. And Union has embarked upon a multi million dollar campaign to uh, pres preserve our historic uh, building and to restore elements of it as well. And so this, these funds will also be used to um, make a community center, food pantry, and meeting space uh, available for generations to come. Thank you so much for your time. Very good. Thank you very much, Carl. I saw Tom Callahan slip in here. Tom, you ready to go? Talk about your project. You've done more on the issue of Community Preservation Act than probably anybody, so uh, you deserve a lot of credit. We're giving away 34. A round of applause for Tom Callahan. With, we're, we're here today to give give out uh, thirty four million dollars. If you would have thought you would see that day, uh, yes, based on the last yes, we did. So, take that. <laughs> so good to see you, Tom. State your name and affiliation for the sure. record, and I know you want to talk about the home buying program. So you have the floor. Thank you, Councillor. Um, so my name is Tom Callahan. I'm representing the Massachusetts Affordable Housing Alliance, and um, yeah, it's been a long day coming, but we are glad we're we're finally here um, as part of. Uh, this uh, process for, for awarding deserving projects all around the city. Um, 
I want to start by saying thank you to the council and your leadership, Councilor Polarity, Councilor Campbell, all of the council <laughs> um, pretty much supported this, both the past council to put it on the ballot, the current council, um, and uh, we we really appreciate the, the the level of support that we got initially for a tax question, right? But now people are seeing seeing the benefits of that tax question. I know you have a lot of applicants, so I'll be very short. We are very pleased to have worked with DND um, very closely, Maureen Flynn, Sheila Dillon, um, on designing a product to help make it a little easier, at least, for first-time home buyers, low and moderate income first-time home buyers, to be able to buy their own home here in the city of Boston. As we know, housing prices are enormously high. It's really difficult and challenging for first-time home buyers, low wealth buyers. Uh, in many cases, first generation buyers who don't have a family history. And we hope that this uh, buy down program, uh, $3.8 million, will help um, 70, 75 home buyers in the city, um, which will be, doesn't sound like a lot, but it is a, uh, almost a doubling of the current level of support DD is able to provide to, um, to first time home buyers now. So uh, we think this is a program that will be very popular. and. Um, we thank the council, the mayor, Mayor Walsh, and DND for their leadership. And I want to, on behalf of Maha and GBIO, we were the applicants to this. And I believe Councillor Jamie and um, Councillor Anissa Sabi George, and um, I'm, I know I'm forgetting, we also got a few support letters from some of the councillors, and I know I'm forgetting somebody, but I know you all supported it, and uh, we wanted to thank, thank you as well. Um, so. Thank you very Thank much, you. Tom. Appreciate that. Uh, Bob Menino, Nantucket Lightship. You here, Bob? Come on down. Price was right. That's the show. I see. Come on down. Bob, we love that boat, so can you tell us about it? <laughs> My name is Bob Menino. I'm president of the U.S. Lightship Museum. Nantucket Lightship LV112 is owned and managed by a nonprofit organization, the United States Lightship Museum. We are a floating museum permanently docked in East Boston. The ship's home port has always been Boston. Since 2010, this famous floating lighthouse has been open to the general public while it undergoes restoration back to its former glory. You may have read about the light ship currently for sale, which is a privately owned vessel. That is not us. <laughs> Our ship is the largest U.S. light ship ever built. It holds the rare distinction of being both a national historic landmark and a national treasure. It can only be owned by a nonprofit. From 1936 to 1975, it guided transoceanic ships past the treacherous Nantucket Shoals 100 miles off the mainland. That is why it is called Nantucket. It, is welcomed, it welcomed immigrants to America, earning it the nickname, the Statue of Liberty of the Sea. With CPA funds, we will be able to do long deferred maintenance and critical restoration on the Nantucket's hull. This work has, hasn't been done since the lightship was built 83 years ago. The lightship hosts hundreds of school children, which we have some here today, tourists, and other visitors annually. Our renovation plan includes expanding our hours to allow more people to experience this important part of New England's and Boston's seafaring history. We sincerely thank Boston City Council Lydia Edwards, the CPA Committee, and the Boston City Council for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Best of luck. Let's get uh, Beverly Johnson and Lisa Guscott from the Rio Grande Housing. Hi, Michael. How are you? And she will be followed by Barry Gate here from uh, Abbotsford and um, uh, Principal Kim from the Lee School Playground. Uh, well, good afternoon, to Chairman Flaherty, Councillor Jamie, other city councilors. Uh, we're pleased to be here today. I'd like to quickly introduce Lisa Guscott and Carrie Guscott, who represent the ownership entity uh, for Rio Grande. We're very, uh, very happy 
to get this funding opportunity uh, specifically because it's going to support um, our goal to provide 48 units of affordable rental housing in a tower that will house a total of 241 units. The affordability level for this project is at 20%, so it exceeds the city of Boston's 13% IDP requirement. Uh, all of the affordable rental units will be made available for those whose incomes are at 50% AMI. Uh, we are very happy to be able to provide these units so that the very critical affordable housing um, crunch that we currently have, which in some instances is driving people out of the city, will allow resi these residents who occupy these apartments to not only stay in the city, but have access to public transit that will allow them to travel to their jobs and give them an opportunity to have more disposable income uh, for their other needs. So again, we want to thank the CPA and the council, uh, D and D, other city agencies for their support uh, on this housing allocation. And thank you, Beverly, for obviously you work on affordable housing and on the CPA as well. So, well thank done, you. well said. So, congratulations. I'm Edmund Barry Gaither of the National Center of Afro-American Artists, housed in the Abbotsford Mansion in Roxbury. In order to ensure that the Abbotsford building's envelope is watertight, CPA funds will be used for the restoration of the slate roof and its flashing. In an additional effort to protect the legacy of the last remaining Roxbury Mansion, Coping stones along the edge of the roof will also be reset and repointed with the assistance from this grant. Efforts to resist infiltration by water into the building minimizes the risk of damage to both the building itself and to the art objects housed therein, thus playing a crucial role in the preservation of Roxbury's rich cultural heritage. Uh, I want to thank uh, Councillor Janey and indeed all of the councillors and the brilliant process of the CPA for this support. I look forward to gifting the city with something that it will love even more than what it has now. Thank you very much. It's a beautiful building. Well, Good afternoon. Uh, thank you. My name is Kim Crowley. I'm the proud principal of the Joseph Lee K-8 school located in the Codman Square, ooh, ooh, Codman Square area of Dorchester and a part of the Boston public school system. Um, our student population includes approximately 40% of students with special needs, uh, specifically students with autism spectrum disorder. The, school, uh, the CPA funding will allow for our 700 students to have an ex uh, accessible and diverse outdoor play space. We currently have an outdoor space that consists of pavement areas, no real play structures, and two basketball hoops for our students. The new playground will encompass the needs of our new grade K through eight structure and meet the needs of all learners. The playground will be accessible for all mobility types and accommodate the sensory needs our students require. As our school sits on Franklin Field, this playground is perfectly um, positioned to also be accessible to the children in our neighborhood, specifically that abut Franklin Field. We are grateful for the consideration and are very excited for the possibilities this will bring to our school community. Thank you very much to the council. Very good, thank you very much. Uh, where is Laquisha from Wow, Noel Street Park? Is she here? Come on down, Laquisha. And Laquisha will be followed uh, by um, Giovanni and Wendy from the Mildred Haley uh, Playground, followed by Lynn Spencer from Memorial Hall, followed by um, Cameron uh, Zahidi from U Homes, 90 Antwerp Street. Just start to queue up if you would mind. Welcome. How Thank you. Doing? you. Um, hello, Madam President, Andre Campbell and Bossy City Councilors. My name is Laquisa Burke, and I'm the president and founder of the West of Washington Coalition, aka the WOW Coalition. So 
Um, I want to thank you for having me here today. I would like to thank all the Boston City Councilors, state reps, and representatives who wrote letters on the behalf of WOW. Um, the CPA funding award will allow Tea Lee Development and the West of Washington Coalition, WOW, to acquire a private park for the purpose of creating a 9,000 square foot community park at the corner of Norwell and Park Street. Since the founding of the West of Washington Neighborhood Group in 2016, we have identified these vacant lots as prime real estate to build a flagship community park, which will provide a playground for our kids, benches and trees for our seniors, and a gathering spot for us to host barbecues and other community events. We also expect this space to be a dual, a dual place for exercise to help promote health within the community. In an effort to help with the design fundraising and construction process, we have established a park committee to assist during this process. Um, the park committee consists of new, long-term, and returning residents of the WOW Coalition. We believe there's power and ownership, therefore we commit to the, community, to the community members being part of this process. We, if we, if we build it, we are more likely to take care of it. Um, within the WOW community, we approximately have 1,900 residents, which of 466 are under the age of 18 and 294 are over the age of 65. That means that 40% of the WOW neighborhood consists of children and the elderly. The proposed park will provide important leisurely and recreational green space for these Boston residents. The funding of the $460,000 we received is a dream come true and uh, and an amazing first step towards making the park a reality for our community. We thank the CPA for their generosity and attention to our needs, and we thank um, Andrea Campbell for being one of the first city councilors um, to support the WOW Coalition. Thank you. Thank you. Step right up. Yeah. Cameras are here, president of Urbanica. Urbanica last year was selected by Boston Planning and development agency for development of 90 Antropa Street to 20 units mixed income housing with a public open space. The project will add 12 home ownerships uh, to Brighton and Austin community, and 60% of the units are gonna be affordable units. Without CPA, this project wouldn't be possible to create that home ownership because the home ownership funding for uh, is not available uh, like you know the rental uh, housing uh, which is available on for the state and other agencies i would like to thank cpa and also the dnd and bpda and also harvard for uh, donating the land for this cause uh, that's it thank you very good thank you Cameron. good afternoon My name is Giovanni Valencia. I'm uh, part of the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Development Corporation, JPNDC. Wendy Polanco could make it, but I'm here with uh, two board members at the Madrid Haley Tenant Organization. Hi, uh, Josefina Osorio, board member of the Mindres and Helen Apartment. Yolanda Torres, board member of the Mildred and Haley. Thank you. The Midwest Haley Apartments is a Boston housing uh, development in Jamaica Plain that provides, provides housing to more than 800 families in Jamaica Plain. There are also several uh, senior buildings in the area, and there is not enough uh, green space or open space for everybody to interact. The community preservation funds will allow the Midwest Haley Apartments uh, community in Jamaica Plain to turn an underutilized space into a beautiful new place, exercise, and recreational area. Uh, the playground will be suitable for intergenerational use by hundreds of children, senior, and members of the Jackson School community. This project is a partnership between the JPNDC and the uh, Midred Haley Tenant Organization, and we want to uh, thank the CPA committee, the CPA office, the city council, and especially city councilor Matt O'Malley for his support during the application process. Thank you. Thank you for your involvement and staying involved in the CPA stuff. So it's good to see you again. Uh, Tim from the Kelly McGough, um, Kelly McGough Park. Is Tim here? Uh, Leroy Atkinson. 
Leroy from High Park SDA, and uh, Lillian from Gardens of Charlestown. Make your way down. Yeah, it's great to see you. Welcome, you have the floor. Good afternoon. I can be brief, and I will. I want to thank the councilors who are here for taking the time. I want to thank uh, Council Redwoods and her team. I also want to thank Christine Poff and her team. The Kelly Park is named after. Just name an affiliation for the record. Tim O'Connell. I'm sorry. I was, getting, I was getting to the thank yous too I quickly, Councillor. <laughs> the CPA funds will be used to restore the sod benches and some other activity in the <clears throat> Kelly McGough Park. That's an 11,000 square foot park in Charlestown, named for two community activists. Um, their families are still in Charlestown. They're also very active in the community. If you have any questions, you can certainly call me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tim. Welcome. Good afternoon, um, Chairman Flaherty, City Councilors. I have with me my minister. James Jensen, pastor of the Hyde Park Seventh Adventist Church. Good afternoon. Welcome. I, I just want to express our sincerest gra gratitude. Um, we, the Hyde Park community, is so grateful for the support that you have uh, provided, both the Community Preservation Committee, the City of Boston, and our Council Representative, Tim McCarty. We are th very grateful for this in grant consideration. This grant is very important to us, and it will help us to support um, funding or uh, provide funding for the support of restoring our roofing. Or right now, our roof is in such dire condition, as well as for pointing and, and restoring the structure of the building. Um, this will enable us to continue to use the building to provide community support, um, like you know, food and clothes distribution and for the various um, entities and groups that use the building um, for um, various meetings. We look forward to continue providing this service, and we um, hope that as we go through with the rest of the process, um, we'll you know, be in full agreement and cooperation and collaboration with the community and the city of Boston. Thank you very much. Very we appreciate everything. Thank you, Leo. Very good. Lillian, welcome. Good to see you. Hello, I'm Lillian Weigert. I'm representing the Gardens for Charlestown. With CPA funding, three signs will be designed, built, and installed at the Gardens for Charlestown to enhance public use and enjoyment of this independent community garden. You know, 40 years ago, this was a derelict parcel of urban renewal property. If you look at our poster outside, you'll see now how it's flourishing. This community garden functions also as a park, offering walking paths, benches, and tables, surrounded by flourishing volunteer gardens. We're open from dawn to dusk in a part of Charlestown with scant public green space. New signs are needed to replace the broken and unsafe existing signage, identify the gardens by its proper name, and no one knows why the original sign has the wrong name on it, and let residents of Charlestown as well as the public know that this urban oasis is open to all. We thank Councillor Lydia Edwards for her thoughtful and strong support and the members of the CPA for their help in this process. Thank you. Thank you, Lillian. Uh, Terra Street, Artist Grando, Steve Mayer, St. Luke's, Sociedad Latina, Lydia Redmonds in Salal Hall on Thompson Island. If you can make your way down to the microphones. Hello, my name is Stephen Meyer. I'm here representing uh, Primary and our Mission Hill Artist Affordable Housing Project. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank the City Council for having us. Uh, with special thanks to Councillor Zakem for his support in the application process. Uh, with additional thanks to the Community Preservation Committee, as well as the Department of Neighborhood Development. CPA funds will support the construction of two new affordable artists live-work buildings in Boston's Mission Hill neighborhood. In total, these structures will contain 14 new units of affordable home ownership and will each be anchored by a ground-level shared art space. 
These spaces will not only provide invaluable room for residents to work and congregate, but will also act as frames for the community, adding vibrancy and life to Terrace Street while allowing the neighborhood's newest homeowners to tap into and contribute to Mission Hill's longstanding artistic traditions. Thank you very much. Very welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Norman Mayo. I'm the general manager of Thompson Island, the beautiful home of the Thompson Island Outward Bound Education Center. CPA funds will repoint uh, brickwork on historic Sala Hall, a building used for the STEM programs for thousands of students in the Boston Public School who come to the islands each year for learning and exploring. This will prepare the building for future storms, of which we have many on the island, um, and protect it against weather damage. It comes at a perfect time for us when uh, maintaining our historic, and by historic I mean old, uh, physical plant on the island becomes more and more difficult every year. Already the CPA recommendation has helped us leverage additional support for the outward bound activities. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Welcome. Good afternoon. My name is Lydia Emmons. I'm the Associate Director at Sociedad Latina. And my name is Victoria Garcia. I'm an alumni and current Executive Assistant of Sociedad Latina. Uh, with support from CPA funds, Sociedad Latina is going to be launching our Center for Latino Youth Leadership, a dynamic community hub that celebrates youth leadership, Latino culture, accommodates culturally responsive youth development programs, and serves as a safe space for Mission Hill residents. Last year, we were afforded the opportunity to purchase our building, which allowed us to stay in our rapidly changing neighborhood of Mission Hill. We have also experienced tremendous growth over the past five years, now serving almost 5,000 young people and their families. With these funds, we'll re-envision our space to create programming uh, to expand to young people in Mission Hill. In this space, uh, we will create a cutting edge STEM lab for middle and high school students um, where they can gain critical skills. Um, and we want to thank our city councilor, Josh Zakem, for his leadership and continued support on this project. Thank you. Thank you very much. Second call for St. Luke's. Second call for St. Luke's, followed by uh, folks from Reggie Wong Park, Ringer Park, the Pierce Building. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Now I know how John Kiley felt up in the uh, rafters up there. <laughs> I'm here. My name is Jerry Sullivan. I'm here to represent St. Luke's on Roxbury Street in Roxbury. These CPA funds will help us to emerge, emergency stabilize the work of St. Louis Chapel as we continue to, to develop our plan for complete restoration of this Ralph, historic Ralph Cram design facility. This grant will provide a cornerstone from which we can leverage additional support to establish a performance and gathering spot, spot for the Dudley Square area. We look forward to making this distinctive building avail available to the Roxbury community. Uh, we also want to obviously thank the CPA folks as well as council for your consideration. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Reggie Wong. Reggie Wong back, Lydia. Welcome. Thank you. I'm here from the Chinatown Community Land Trust. We're a nonprofit organization working to stabilize the future of Chinatown. Our mission is collective community control of land and development without displacement, and we work for permanently affordable housing and shared neighborhood spaces. We're proposing much needed work on Chinatown and the Leather District's only outdoor recreational space known as Reggie Wong Memorial Park. This is a well-used park that, use, that includes both basketball and volleyball courts and is the home of Chinese nine-man volleyball in the Boston area. Over 50,000 people live within a mile of Reggie Wong Park, and these improvements are phase one of a plan, of a long-term plan to make it attractive and available to more people um, who live in the area in addition to the hundreds of athletes that currently use it regularly. Um, the proposal is to, current proposal focuses particularly on safety and much needed upkeep uh, to demolish a curb that players trip over to repave and reline the courts, install new basketball hoops and um, have higher fencing to prevent balls from going out onto the street or the highway. Um, I'd like to thank the Community Preservation Committee and to thank Councillor Flynn for his stalwart support. Thank you, Lydia. We've also been joined by our colleague, Lydia Redwoods, Ringer Park. 
Hi, I'm Leah Whiteside from Dorchester Bay Economic Development Corporation. Dorchester Bay is undertaking an exciting and transformative project at the heart of the Upham's Corner Dorchester neighborhood. The Pierce Rehab Project is a gut rehab and restoration of a historic building in the center of this busy commercial district. The Pierce building was constructed in 1904 on the site of the former Samuel B. Pierce estate, and the Pierce family owned most of the land in Upham's Corner. His descendants were responsible for subdividing and developing the neighborhood in the late 19th century. The Pierce Building itself has historically been home to various retail uses on the ground floor and uses such as furniture vendors and music schools on the upper three floors. And Dorchester Bay has owned the building since about 1985. So we now plan to begin construction shortly on the Pierce Rehab Project, which will result in a fully accessible building with new ground floor retail, incubator space for locally owned arts-related businesses, and space for Dorchester Bay's own offices, including our small business lending program. We expect our tenants in the building to create 25 new jobs for local residents. CPA funds have been an essential source for this project. With CPA funds, we'll be able to fully restore the historic facade and contribute to the planned revitalization of the Upham's Corner District by making this prominent building at the gateway to the neighborhood shine. I'd like to thank particularly Councillor Baker for his support of our CPA application, as well as for his ongoing support for our Pierce project. Thank you. Very good, thank you. Uh, second call for Ringer Park. Uh, West End House. West End House. Arlington Street Church. First Baptist. West End House. Or no. Step right up, ma'am. Okay. Go ahead. I like it. I like someone that's assertive. Go ahead. You have the floor, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Jeffrey Gagno. I'm a historic preservation consultant and part of the restoration project team at First Baptist Church. Uh, the Reverend John Odoms is tending to pastoral duties this afternoon and is unable to be here, so he asked me to present this project statement on his behalf. <clears throat> Boston CPA funds will be used to restore the red slate and copper roof and crumbling masonry at the top of First Baptist Church's 176-foot tall tower, one of the most recognizable elements of the Back Bay skyline, especially with its protective scaffolding in place now. CPA funds will also help repair the most deteriorated areas of the slate roof elsewhere on the building, where active leaks are damaging the elaborate stenciled ceiling of the interior, which is a pending Boston landmark. Completed in 1872 and designed by noted architect H.H. H. Richardson, this important building represents Richardson's first consistent use of Romanesque forms throughout a structure and is said to mark the beginning of the Richardsonian Romanesque architectural style that remained fashionable in America well into the 20th century, especially in the design of public and religious buildings. A CPA grant for this project will immediately leverage a $250,000 challenge grant from the National Fund for Sacred Places program, which is working with the congregation to preserve and further activate this important historic site. The First Baptist project team and the congregation would like to thank the Boston CPA staff and the Community Preservation Committee for their guidance and hard work, and to thank Mayor Walsh, the City Council Committee, and the entire City Council, especially Councilor Zakum and Little Leo, if he's still in the room, uh, for supporting the Community Preservation Act in this important project. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is Jerry Spanik, and I am here today proudly representing West End House Boys and Girls Club in Alston. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. At West End House, uh, community preservation funds will be used to fund a restoration landscaping project in Alston's Ringer Park, which was designed by renowned landscape architect Frederick Law Olmsted, who also designed Boston's Emerald Necklace and New York City's Central Park. We will extend sodding and irrigation on the parkland immediately adjacent to West End House property and install an ADA-compliant water fountain for use by the public. The water fountain will be attached to West End House's water source. As part of its recent $11 million building renovation that greatly improved its interface with Ringer Park, the West End House was pleased to invest funds into public parklands, knowing the benefit it has for the whole community. We have already seen the impact of our existing landscaping work last summer when we had programming for the community every Friday night and hundreds gathered. We're eager to build upon this amenity for the community. On behalf of our board of directors, board of advisors, our, our CEO, the staff, the youth we serve, and the Alston Brighton community, a huge thank you to Councillor Mark Siomo for his support on this project. 
Very good, thank you. Welcome, name and affiliation for the sure. record. Thank you, Council. Um, my name is Alyssa Butler, and I am here representing Arlington Street Church. Um, I'm the executive director of their museum side. Um, the CPA funds um, will go towards completely repairing and restoring a set of fallen stairs that faces Boylston Street on the corner of Boylston and Arlington Street. Uh, this is a highly visible corner, um, and it's been incredibly difficult for all the programs we run to have a full set of stairs inoperable and boarded up. Um, but also it is an incredibly historic building. The congregation was founded in 1729. The current building was built in 1861 and was the first public building put in Back Bay. Um, it's also the site of the first legal same-sex church marriage in the entire country by the current minister, Kim Crawford Harvey. Um, but also it's a very active church. Um, there's 12-step meetings, there's a food pantry, there's a clothing pantry. Uh, every week there is a food um, dinner for those who need it. We have book clubs, yoga classes, meditation classes, and um, a very fast-growing museum that we have every summer for the world's largest themed collection of Tiffany glass windows. Um, so not having these stairs um, is not only difficult for us, but also um, an eyesore for our community. And so these funds will completely restore those stairs, um, and we expect to have the entire project completed this summer if you choose to fund us. Um, also, this, this money will allow us to meet the matching grants for three other capital campaign grants that we have received for our building envelope. Um, so again, on behalf of Arlington Street Church and our Preservation Foundation, I'd like to thank the council and Councilman Zakem as well, who's our representative. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, AOP Acquisition Opportunity Program and uh, Aileron Home Ownership. Jessica. Hi, Jessica Boatwright. Um, I think I covered the AOP Acquisition Opportunity Program before, so I'm Perfect. happy to answer questions, but we're very excited for the investment. That'd be great. Any others on your list of the uh, Aileron Home Ownership? Is this gentleman here? Perfect. Yeah, that's Thank that you. Yeah. I'm Aileron. I'd be happy to speak about the Acquisition Opportunity Program since we've done 15 <laughs> buildings in 45 units, but that would be a commercial that's not on my time. But uh, thank you, Councillor Edwards, and uh, for supporting Aileron. Uh, but again, I think the AOP is a great program and maybe one of the city's highest priorities. But in any case, you funded us for uh, seven home ownership, uh, four home ownership units. I'll read my first sentence. CEPA funds will allow seven condominium units at Aileron on project in East Boston, four of which are affordable to be added to the East Boston housing stock. This condo development, in addition to 33 rental units of housing supported by DND, 17 artist studios, work bar gallery space will be built at a later date, hopefully next year. It will repurpose a long vacant city owned lot, DD lot, and aid in the creation of a new vibrant mixed use income community. So, again, we want to say thank you to the council, to the mayor, DND, and others from the committee for putting this together. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. Morton Station Village, Knights of Columbus, 41 North Margin Street. And that will, uh, that will close out our affordable housing opportunities. Good afternoon. Thank you. I'm da David Aiken, Senior Project Manager with the Planning Office for Urban Affairs, and I'm here with our uh, partner. <laughs> and my name is Dono Alexis. Uh, I'm the president of the Caribbean Integration Community Development in Marapen. Um, uh, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to Council um, uh, Florida and, and also uh, uh, I'll see the Council um, uh, um, Andrea Campbell. Um, Martin Village is a joint venture between the Caribbean Integration Community Development and the Plan Office for Urban Affairs. So uh, um, we're responding to a CDIFP uh, 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 for, uh, for the former police station on Martin Street. Um, uh, uh, the two groups kind of work together to kind of lay out um, uh, kind of lay out the vision by the city, uh, uh, by, like, by the um, by the community to like you know to to redevelop that land uh, uh, um, into a community asset. 
Uh, thanks. Our proposal uh, was formed after many community conversations to provide um, one affordable rental housing, uh, two affordable condominium units, which is the subject of the CPA funding, and also enable the community uh, to realize the creation of the Stephen P. Odom Serenity Garden in conjunction with the City of Boston's Parks Department on a portion of land that abuts uh, Hopkins Street. Uh, the support of the CPA Committee, DND, City Council is crucial for the affordable home ownership units here. Um, the community leaders, elected officials, residents really express their desire for the affordable home ownership, which is only made possible really uh, by having a resource such as the CPA uh, now available, which will support uh, the creation of these nine uh, condiment units in, in addition to the 31 rental units. Um, so thank you very much. Very good. Thank you. Good work. Okay, I want to say a uh, thank you to um, the City Council Andrea Campbell any staff that was uh, uh, that was very helpful to the process like helping us with the uh, application and also uh, and also the CPA staff thank you very good thank you North End how are you good name and affiliation for the record I'm David Ennis of Affirmative Investments and I'm working with the Al Calderelli and the East Boston CDC and the Knights of Columbus to create 23 new senior affordable housing units in the North End which in the historic building that, that's housed the Knights of Columbus for the last 50 years. Um, the CPA funds are a critical piece, the, the gap filler, um, allowing us to go forward. But most importantly, they're allowing us to set rents at very low levels so we can serve a full range of affordable seniors in the, nor in the North End. And we believe these are the first affordable units, new production units in several decades. So we would like, want to thank uh, Councilman Edwards very much, CPA, Sheila Dillon and the D&D and, and the mayor's office have been very, very supportive. Thank you very much. Uh, Charles Gate, Faneuil Hall Archaeology and the Farmers Collaborative. Welcome. Thank you, Councilors. My name is Margaret Picorni. I'm speaking on behalf of the Charles Gate Alliance. And I want to just begin by thanking the mayor, without whose leadership we wouldn't have the CPA in the first place. And this is really been an amazing process that he supported that Christine and her team have done. And also we want to thank Josh Sakam, our district counselor and new father extraordinaire for his support. <clears throat> Working with the DCR, the Charles Gate Alliance will use this grant to complete a shovel ready master plan for the transformation of a long neglected 13 acre site in the Kenmore neighborhood. In addition to creating open space and park amenities, this plan will restore the historic link between the Emerald Necklace, the Charles River Esplanade, and the Commonwealth Avenue Mall. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. My name is Sarah Kylie Schaff, and I'm the president of the Friends of Boston Archaeology. It's a charitable organization established to support and advocate for the City of Boston Archaeology program. Um, so the Friends of Boston Archaeology applied for funds for the Faneuil Hall Archaeology Lab and Exhibit, exploring Boston's role in slavery. Um, CPA resources for this project will preserve and make accessible more than 33,000 artifacts excavated from beneath Faneuil Hall from 1630 to 1740 and create a new permanent exhibit that will bring to light for the first time to public view the hidden histories of Boston that are revealed exclusively through archaeology. So the exhibit will explore Boston's role in the transatlantic slave trade, the works of local artisans in the 17th and 18th century, and Boston's role as a primary port city in the global marketplace. Faneuil Hall has millions of annual visitors who will be able to see the artifacts being restored in the um, pop-up temporary archaeology laboratory. They'll be able to learn about the history through the new museum exhibit and see some of the representative samples of artifacts and access all of the data and images that are created as a result of this project online through a database. The Friends of Boston Archaeology are grateful for the support of the project from the community, from the CPA committee, Mayor Walsh, the um, City Archaeology Program, the City Property Management Division, the National Park Service, and Councilors Flynn, Asabi George, Baker, Campbell, O'Malley, and former councillor and congresswoman Ayanna Presley. And thank you, City Council, for reviewing in our project. Thank you. Oh. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Hi. 
Uh, my name is Orion Kriegman. I'm with the Boston Food Forest Coalition. Uh, today, uh, representing Farmers Collaborative. <coughs> CPA funds will enable Boston Food Forest Coalition to complete the first site of the Farmers Collaborative uh, five-site scattered farm at 424 Geneva Ave in Dorchester. We want to say thank you to Andrea Campbell and Tim McCarthy for their letters of support. This site had been a vacant lot with a convenient worn path that the neighbors were using. We are now grading that path, making it accessible for all while adding fruit trees, raised garden beds, arbor, patio, seating space, outdoor lighting, educational signage, and a city water hookup to support the local efforts of community members that are tending gardens on the site, as well as to create an open community space for gardening education and events. The visual impact and success at 424 Geneva is already leveraging additional support for similar community food forest sites as part of the scattered five lot farm that can be found throughout Mattapan, Dorchester, and Roxbury, known as Farmers Collaborative. We, we also want to thank Speak for the Trees and American Forest for an initial round of funding that produced a short video describing the impact of this work in the neighborhood. Thank you very much. Thank you. Chinatown, Chinatown Immigrant Heritage Center. Charlestown's Memorial Hall, Old State House, Charles Street AME, and the Dimmick Z Building. Charlestown Memorial Hall, I'm Larry yeah. Stevens. I'm the treasurer of the Friends of Memorial Hall. <clears throat> and on behalf of the veterans and volunteer members of Abraham Lincoln Post 11, Grand Army of the Republic, <clears throat> we wish to thank the mayor, Lydia Edwards, and the city council, Christine Puff, and the members of the CPC and the taxpayers of Boston for, for awarding us this awesome grant to make the next step in the preservation of Memorial Hall. With these resources, we can finally turn the corner from our current task of, of preventing further damage to one of, of rebuilding our, the building into its former glory and a member of the buildings of Charlestown as it should be. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank you it. very much. Welcome. State your name and affiliation. Good afternoon, Chairperson Clarity, uh, Vice Chair Campbell, fellow council members. Susan Chu, I'm here as Executive Director of the Chinese Consolidated Benevolent Association of New England, or CCBA for short. Uh, we own a building at 90 Tyler Street in Chinatown. The building is 170 years old and substantial work is needed to address the immediate deterioration of the building envelope, as well as numerous associated issues. The facility, which has significantly served the Chinese immigrant community since the late 19th century, continues to do so as a multi-generational and popular community center. Open approximately 80 hours a week, hundreds of people frequent the building weekly to attend programs, receive assistance, or hold community meetings. This site was recognized by the National Park Service's National Register of Historic Places as a place of historical and cultural significance uh, last year. CCBA operates the site on a shoestring budget, and the funds from the CPA will enable us to offer a safer and better space for the community, especially for youth and seniors, and to work towards preserving community's rich immigrant and cultural history. The anticipated repair work includes repairing significant settlement cracks to the interior and exterior of the building, replacing rotted window framing, which has caused large gaps and openings allowing water and cold air into the building, stabilizing the building's settling foundation through the installation of structural beams, and addressing uneven flooring and doorway gaps in the building, as well as long-standing ventilation and heating issues, which have been inadequately addressed over the years. Um, I know several of the council members are familiar of the, with the building, but for those who are not, I invite you to look at our picture boards outside or to come uh, visit our building. I'd be more than happy to give you a tour of the building and tell you all the programming that we offer. Finally, I would like to thank uh, Chinatown's council member, Councillor Flynn, as well as the CPA staff for their support of this um, project of ours. And I would like to thank the council for its consideration today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome. Hi, my name is Nathaniel Scheidley. I'm here as the executive director of the Bostonian Society, which is the nonprofit organization that cares for and interprets Boston's old state house, one of the places where the robust democratic tradition on display in this chamber today began. So you can imagine I'm very happy to be here today. 
Um, I, I want to um, I want to make sure that I thank Christine Poff and her team for guiding our application through the process. Um, thank Councillor Flynn for his support. Thank the committee um, for recommending us for an award. And I especially want to thank the council as a whole um, for their leadership in supporting this uh, this tool. Uh, for investing in the infrastructure that is absolutely essential to sustaining, to building and sustaining healthy communities across our city. Um, funds from the CPA will be used by the Bostonian Society to address urgent priorities for preserving the old state house. Those include stabilizing deteriorating structural beams, performing intensive work, uh, restorative work on windows throughout the building, and updating the overtaxed and very outdated HVAC system um, in ways that will improve energy efficiency throughout the building and protect the historic building and its collections for generations to come. Um, this work will support the goal of sustaining a healthy and vibrant community by expanding access to the building um, and its capacity to welcome a growing and diverse audience of more than 140,000 people from around our city and all across the country to engage firsthand with our nation's history. Um, so it puts this touchstone for our city's democracy and our nation's democracy on firm footing for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Flaherty. Um, I bring you greetings from the historic Charles Street AME Church in Roxbury, Massachusetts. My name is James Cater. I am a senior trustee. Um, I also bring you greetings from our uh, pastor, who could not be in attendance, the Reverend Gregory G. Groover Sr. Um, unfortunately, he had to officiate a, a funeral, so he apologizes for not being in attendance. Um, the historical Charles Street AME Church was organized in Beacon Hill in Boston in 1818 and continues to operate and thrive as a congregation in Roxbury, Massachusetts, located now at 551 Warren Street at the corner of Warren Street and Elm Hill Ave. Originally All Souls Unitarian Church built in 1888 by James William Beale, a graduate of MIT um, and a foremost uh, architect for uh, uh, concrete uh, at his time. Uh, and added to the National Registry of Historical Places in 1983. It has been our home since 1939. For the past 80 years, Charles Street AME Church has been uh, at the Warren Street location, serving the community as a site for community events, meetings, services to the local community, including a food bank, um, a convening uh, place for our local Narcotics Anonymous, which just celebrated their 20th anniversary at our location, and a burgeoning music academy. We are excited to be an awardee of the Community Preservation Act dollars, and will use the award to one, contract with an architect to perform needs assessment on our historical edifice, and two, begin full repointing of the Roxbury Pudding Stone steeple and the rest of the church to ensure its viability for the next 100 years and the viability of our congregation in service to the community for the next 200 years. Uh, we want to give special thanks to, and support to Councillor Janey and to uh, Council President Campbell, who have been helpful in guiding us along the way, as well as uh, the CPA, both Christine Poff and uh, Thadine Powell for Nadine Brown for your support. Thank you so much. Very good. Thank you. This is uh, Dimmick. Uh, this is Dimmick, correct? Yeah. So after Dimmick, we're going to go to uh, Coppin Square, second call for Coppin Square, second call for Old West in the West End, and also Haley House in the South End, Roxbury. Good afternoon. My name is Raquel Rosenblatt. I'm from the Dimmick Center in Roxbury. Thank you so much, Councillor Flaherty and the entire City Council for having us here today. Thank you, Councillor Janey, for your wonderful letter of support for our project. Community Preservation Act funding will allow the Dimmick Center to restore approximately 130 windows in our Dr. Marie E. Zakshevska building built in 1873. Dr. Z, as we affectionately call her, was the founder of the New England Hospital for Women and Children, Dimmick's predecessor. This work is vital because we need to prepare the building to house our men's residential recovery programs, which support 40 men for one year, linking them with care in our health center, 
and helping them set goals for family reunification, education, and employment as part of their recovery. Providing the full range of substance use disorder services on our campus makes Dimmick unique among other community health centers. It's been a really wonderful process working with all of you and with Christine and on behalf of everyone at the Dimmick Center, thank you again for your consideration and your partnership. Good afternoon, my name is Christina Lanzo. I am standing in for Ed Cook from Dorchester. I'm sure many of you know, know him. Yep. Uh, he was born and uh, grew up in the neighborhood and has been living there uh, for 35 years with his partner, uh, spouse. Karen Charles, board member. And uh, we're here to thank you from, our, from the bottom of our hearts for granting support for the Coppin Square Park. Um, the CPA grant will allow us to design and update the park. It's been a 10 year effort actually. I've, I myself have been part of the second sort of effort uh, that was funded for planning study. And we're now, with your help, able to actually uh, get on board uh, with, the, with the parks department. So the, design, the redesign and renovation of uh, this uh, small 4,500 square foot city park with a historic fountain is located at the end of Bowdoin Street where it meets Adams Street. It's in urgent need of attention. Uh, the design will make the project shovel ready. It will pr provide funds and a foundation for further fundraising and will us put us in the city's capital budget track. The Friends of Coppin Square Park are delighted to be able to continue a long deferred redesign and re creative placemaking initiative Decades of disinvestment and lack of funding for maintenance are anticipated to be reversed in a newly forged, innovative public-private partnership. We are excited about the prospect of developing a lively and active meeting place that celebrates our culturally and ethnically diverse community. We, for instance, translated uh, previous meeting notices into five languages, including Haitian Creole, Cape Verdean, Vietnamese, Spanish, and Portuguese. That just kind of reflects the neighborhood as a whole. We thank our district three councilor, uh, Frank Baker, Council President Andrew Campbell, as well as Councilors Anissa Asaibi George and Matt Tumal, as well as the entire council and Mayor Menino for their unwavering support. Walsh. Sorry, Mayor Walsh, of course. And um, it's been, I've been in the city for too long, clearly. It was ingrained. So thank you. And of course, we really want to thank Christine Pop for this incredible leadership in setting up the program, the CPA program, as well as uh, Thady and Nadine for just helping us along the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Elsa Bengal from Old West Church, which is about two blocks down Cambridge Street. And um, Old West was first formed in 1737. And the current building was built in 1806 and designed by the noted Boston architect Asher Benjamin. Old West Church has enjoyed over 200 years as one of Boston's most celebrated churches. It also, with its old age, comes many challenges. And so the grant that we'll hope to receive from CPA funds will be used for repairs to the tower, which is at the, on the front of the building, and to repair woodwork and deteriorating um, cornices and other um, things that need to be done. It's a big long list. In addition, uh, I just want to say that Old West is a diverse uh, congregation with members from all over the city. And I'd like to just introduce our team here today, Marcelle Rayner and Karen Spiller and our pastor, Sarah Gerard. And we are diverse, we're queer affirming, and our core values are inclusive community, racial equity, and social justice. We're so grateful to Josh Zakem and to the staff at the CPA for helping us and sort of walking us through the process. Um, and I, I just wanna say, lots of us were involved in reducing our requests in order to fund more projects and the way that Christine and staff handled that um, we really felt like we were part of the whole process. Um, and 
you know, are so delighted to see everything that's funded here today. So thank you very much for you your much. support. We'll spend it well. Very good. Thank you. Good afternoon. Well, My name is Bing Broderick. I'm the executive director of Haley House. Uh, I want to say thank you to Christine and the CPA staff and to Councillor uh, Flynn and for all the city council for your support. Haley House is seeking CPA funding to complete the installation of a fire sprinkler and alarm system at 23 Dartmouth, a brick row house in the historic South End that has served as our home base since 1967. The building was built circa 19, sorry, 1870 as the family home of Samuel Carr, a cashier at the Shoe and Leather National Bank. The building later was converted into a multi-unit residence for working class people, including the reclusive author George Hipsley, who wrote under the pseudonym George Hembert Wesley. Wesley's unproduced play, Rothschild, was adapted into the 1934 movie, The House of Rothschild, starring Boris Karloff. Um, by 1925, the house had been converted into a boarding house, mostly occupied by immigrants. In 1967, Haley House founders purchased the building and it became a house of hospitality in the Catholic worker tradition. In the ensuing 52 years, Haley House has continuously given shelter and sustenance to the many who passed through its doors. Among the thousands hosted over the years were Alan Rohan Kreit, Dorothy Day, Cesar Chavez, Daniel Berrigan, Noam Chomsky, Howard Zinn, and theologian Henry Nouwen, as well as many other civil rights and uh, social justice activists. Today, the, home, the building is home to Haley House's direct services and offices, which include the city's longest running soup kitchen, a weekly food pantry, meals for elders, as well as housing for six to 10 members of the full-time volunteer community that runs our direct service program. Completion of this critical project, project will ensure the safety of building residents and program participants, as well as the integrity of the building in case of emergency for the f foreseeable future. We appreciate your consideration and support. Thank you. Thank you. Arboretum Path, Astoria Farm, Lopresti Park, Lena Park, High Park Library Garden and the Menino YMCA. Those are the last remaining applications. Is there anyone here representing an organization that has not heard their name? Welcome. Good afternoon. Thank you, counselors. Thank you for all hanging in there with us. Uh, my name is Steve Gag. I'm from, I represent Walk Up Rosendale, which is a advocacy group for transportation in Rosendale. And I'm here about the Bussy Brook Meadow Path. That has many other names, but that's what we're gonna talk about today, Cre which creates a new entrance to the Arnold Arboretum and an accessible multi-use path to Forest Hill Station. And the project, which is near the BHA Rosendale Archdale development, will transform a neglected and uh, trash-strewn arched passageway into an inviting landscape gateway. Uh, this is one section of the 1.6 mile Roslindale Gateway Path um, that is currently under design. We thank Councilors Tim McCarthy and Michelle Wu, as well as the CPA staff and committee. And thank you again. Awesome. Take good. care. Patricia Spence from the Urban Farming Institute. Thank you to all the counselors and special thanks for letters of support from counselors Wu, McCarthy, and also our state rep, Russell Holmes. CPA funds will be used to complete the construction of an urban farm on the corner of Flint and Astoria Streets in Mattapan. This farm will be an extension of the historic Fowler Clark Epstein Farm and headquarters of the Urban Farming Institute located just two blocks away. We are bringing fresh, healthy food to Mattapan, we're training farmers, we're welcoming volunteers, and demonstrating how good food and farming transform lives and neighborhoods. Our motto is more farms, more food. <laughs> Thank you very much. Welcome. Good afternoon, counselors. My name is Catherine Martinez. I'm the executive director for Lena Park Community Development Corporation in Dorchester, and I'm accompanied by two of my youth leader counselors. One of them. 
Can I, Andrews? Welcome. Hello, my name's Cameron Baxter. Welcome. Lena Park is proposing for the CPA project a uh, tot lot with um, a spin on it with a plaza for the community. This has been an initiative started and fueled by the vision of our youth counselors. It really speaks to the need of having accessibility to a lot of the child care home centers that we have in our community that don't have access to Franklin Park because of the highway style of uh, Blue Hill Avenue. These CPA funds are gonna support that vision and are also going to be able to bring together a sense of community and unity um, to our constituents. We wanna thank also Rep Holmes for believing in our vision and trusting Lena Park to take care of this project. Thank you. Awesome, thank you very much. Welcome, state your name and affiliation. Thank you very much. My name is Magdalena Ayer. I'm the executive director of the Harbor Keepers and I'm here with Alex DeFranzo, who is the executive director of Pierce Park Sailing. We jointly um, as partners and also individually as organizations provide coastal community resiliency, adaptive sailing programs, recreational boating, um, really important programming for all of the families of East Boston. The CPA funds will allow the Parks Department to construct a public access dock off of the pier at La Presti Park, East Boston. This will create a unique venue for equitable public access to Boston Harbor through a climate resilient project available to all Bostonians. The dock will be programmed by our organizations. It will be open for all to use and enjoy. And I'd like to add that um, this area of East Boston is a really underserved area. This public access dock is really critical. We're very grateful. This is gonna serve a lot of underserved families in the Maverick and Eagle Hill area. So I wanna thank the commissioner, Christopher Cook, um, City Councilor Lydia Edwards, and Adrian Madaro, the state representative for supporting this project, and of course, the CPA committee. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Welcome. My name, is, my name is Joe Pugh. I'm the Health and Wellness Director of the Hyde Park YMCA. Uh, first of all, I wanna say thank you for funding the Menino Project, um, and also thank you to Councilman Timothy Calther for supporting our application. CPA funding will transform the, the outdoor grounds behind the Thomas Menino YMCA into an attractive multi-purpose community space. The space will include gardens, outdoor fitness equipment, Zumba classes, performances, movie nights, and so much more. This project is a partnership between the YMCA and Wentworth Inst Institute, whose students are helping with the design. Thank you. Welcome. Hello, uh, Victoria Gall, President, Friends of the Hyde Park Library. Uh, CPA funds will transform an unused area of outdoor space at the Hyde Park branch of the Boston Public Library into a shady garden near busy Cleary Square. The Hyde Park Library Historic Garden is designed with sitting areas and landscaping to showcase architectural artifacts yeah. saved from the historical um, railroad station opened in 1914 and a parochial school was built in around 1890. Both of these buildings lost to demolition. This project has stimulated much interest from Hyde Park library users, Hyde Park residents, and we plan to partner with other organizations such as Keep Hyde Park Beautiful, the Historical Society, and Hyde Park Main Streets on programming and improving the look and use of the library. Who knows, maybe we'll be able to obtain other pieces of Hyde Park history for the garden. Thanks to Councilor McCarthy, the CPA, and of course to property taxpayers. Yeah. Thank you. Very good, thank you. Is there anyone here that has not heard their project called um, and or wishes to offer public testimony may do so now or forever hold your peace? You have the floor, ma'am. State your name and affiliation I'm for the record. I'm Linda Freeman. I'm also a community member over at Project Right. Yep. Have you called on Geneva Ave and the Grove Hall Park? Or did they already go? So okay, the, that's yeah, the part so the I must have missed. Yeah, in the very first presentation, um, gentleman by the name of uh, Aldo uh, Grimm, he did he um, he did the um, presentation for all six of the parks ones. So it's covered. But you you want to offer some kind words on its behalf? You can do so. It's much very much needed, and thank you for supporting it to everyone who has supported um, and CPA as well. Um, I actually drive through a lot of these communities, and thank you all so much for all the support, because I'm in Roxbury, I'm in Dorchester, I'm in Matterpan, I'm in JP. Um, I'm only occasionally in 
uh, uh, Councillor uh, Lydia Edwards area, but that's only once in a while. Um, it, it enlightens me and it's very heartfelt to, to have the quality of life and for everyone. And I can't tell you, it's like, yes! That's awesome, I'm excited. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. So there's no additional public testimony that will conclude the public testimony portion. Christine, if you may just come back, uh, a couple of our colleagues have some questions, in which case uh, my commitment will be to sort of put together a committee report, try to get it out from the Committee on Government Operations as quickly as possible, and then uh, both Councilor Janey and Councilor Flynn, if they have any additional comments or questions of you, uh, and then I'll allow um, Councilor, uh, sorry, the CPA committee, I said the Government Operations it's ingrained. So the community, pres the community preservation committee, the CPC committee, will then put together a committee report, and then, in conjunction with any additional uh, things that you have to add. So my colleagues have some final questions of you, sure. Christine, and then I'll allow the council president to close out um, okay. the meeting at that time. So with that, uh, council chair recognizes council Janey. Thank you. So. Wow, I know. <laughs> um, so I just want to say thank you again, Christine, um, and to all of the folks who are still here, just the level of engagement and, and activism um, by members of our community um, is, is just amazing. And the fact that we can take millions of dollars from tax, that taxpayers were willing to do that and invest it in our community is, is amazing. Um, just a, a couple of uh, observations. Sure. Um, I, I certainly had lots of applicants, which is great. And, and I'm, I'm happy uh, that the area that I represent in the city is very engaged in this process and that we don't want to miss out on the opportunity for affordable housing, historic preservation, and, and, and green space. So that's wonderful. Um, I'm wondering if you had any thoughts um, too. So when I did just an analysis here, if I looked at just the sheer number of applicants from District 7, um, what I found was 22% were around affordable housing, 55% historic, 22% open space, um, which surprised me because I would have thought more would have been for affordable housing. Now when I look at the dollars, you know, the vast majority of the dollars are going toward affordable right. housing for my district, which is great. So if I do it, instead of looking at the number of applicants, if I do it by the amount of money, we've got 52% for affordable housing, 44% for historic, mm -hmm. and 3.5 for open space. I'm just wondering why the number of applicants that we didn't see more, and obviously you may not have that, but just as you were talking with applicants who did apply, um, is there any reason why we didn't see more in just in terms of numbers for, for affordable housing? So if I did the numbers, just the number of applicants, right, right. it was only 22% right. um, re represented for affordable housing versus if I count the dollars, it was 52%. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm just curious right. as to why that is. And then I had a follow-up question to the three folks who were not ready to move forward, the three organizations. Mm -hmm. um, have they been... Uh, directed to to where they can get more kind of technical oh, yeah. support and assistance, mm -hmm. and are they going to be considered in the next round? Yeah. Okay. Um, so let me. Um, and Jessica is still here on the housing. She may be better able to answer that. But you know, it's it, the simple answer is it's incredibly complicated and difficult and expensive to build housing, and I think um, the way D and D and the city's looking at it is wherever they can help make it happen. And it takes a while for projects to come to fruition or even be ready to apply for CPA funds or other city funds. And so, um, and because um, CPA is fairly new and we were trying to prioritize housing, but I think, um, and we did in terms of the dollars, as you said, I think, um, D&D &D really vetted the projects very carefully and was trying to give us projects that were closer to ready to go. So by committing CPA funds, um, that enables um, projects to apply to the state for state housing tax credits and state funds. And they really chose projects that were close to being ready to get, or, or could go to the state 
this year. So that gets them a little bit closer to building since it takes a couple years to actually get the shovel on the ground. Um, the, I think the D&D is working with all kinds of projects that are a little farther away. CPA staff are working, Fadine in particular, is working really closely with, for instance, Elliott Church. That is a massive, beautiful building in your district that um, has 9,000 square feet of underused space and they want to build affordable housing. Um, or turn space into affordable housing, and they're also trying to turn their two large commercial kitchens into catering spaces. And we've partnered, we've gotten them partnered with Wentworth and the Wentworth Architecture Program, Graduate Architecture Program. They're doing designs, and they have recently met with D&D staff for how you put together a financing package. So that's like a really exciting project, but it went from just an idea in the Reverend's head um, to, you know, now they're meeting with D&D about funding. But it's going to be two or three years before it's even close to a shovel in the ground or final designs or applying to the state for funding. So I think it's Were they just, one of the three? No. Okay. They, they have not applied yet. If, do you have the three? If you know what they are, I can respond to questions about them. But I don't have you know, the you list in front of You mentioned the three in your opening. Mm, I did. I thought you did. No. Okay. Oh, three projects that, right, that have the not, thank you so much, that, that have not received yeah. checks yet, but oh, they weren't checks. necessarily in your okay. district. Yeah, okay. they're, they're, one is in West Roxbury, one is, um, uh, I forget, you know, but um, one is the West End, but that's, that's in the works, yeah. No, there were, there were other projects that were not, um, either not quite ready or not eligible for CPA funding, but we are uh, totally working with the ones that were not quite ready. You know, the, the not ready means that they were an idea in someone's head, but they don't have the partners and the resources in place to uh, figure out if there should be a design, to engage the community to make sure they want this. Um, one is a community garden, and we heard from some people on the same street that they nobody had reached out to them yet, and they weren't sure they wanted these extra lots to be community garden. They might want it to be housing or something else. So that's the kind of thing that is not quite ready, mm -hmm. if that Wonderful. helps. No, that very helpful. Thank Great. you. And thank you again uh, for your work. Um, mm -hmm. I can only imagine I got inundated with yeah. a bunch of requests <laughs> for letters, but you having to do this like all the time, yeah. I, you know, thank you. Thanks. For what yeah. you're doing. Well, thanks for what you thank did you. too. I'm going to slip out because I've got two oh, other no. events. I think I may be with you. Um, oh, no. uh, Christine, I, I apologize for being late at the beginning oh, of the hearing, um, and I would have said this. Thank you to, thank you and your incredible team yeah, for the way. work that you guys yeah. do um, behind the scenes, the technical assistance, the tough conversations. You do it with such grace, um, and the response has only been phenomenal. So if you don't hear it enough, I'm going to say it again and again and again. Thank you very much. This is not an easy process to navigate. Um, I also want to thank, of course, Councillor Flaherty for this partnership. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, this was my first initiative when I got to the council and, uh -huh. you know, someone talked about this being a tax initiative and people were yelling and saying, you just got to the council and you want to tax us. But we knew uh, the value of what this program could bring to the city of Boston. Um, and every single day that we get an email about a project in the community or we see a chamber packed with residents informing what is going to be built in their community um, and owned by them and co-created by them, it just brings tremendous yeah, joy. So I great. want to also thank council of Flaherty for the partnership um, and the mayor as well. Um, and lastly, all of the participants, of course, who came to the hearing um, and displayed their projects, put in the work to actually create displays right. for folks in the city um, and in the building to look at. Thank you so much. Um, we will review all of these projects at our next council meeting, which is uh, Wednesday at 12, tomorrow at 12. Um, and based on what you heard today, I'm sure it will be a good meeting and a Great. successful uh, review of this docket. And at this hearing, this doc at this time, unless Councilor Flynn, do you have anything else to say? Okay. And I'm assuming that's it, Christine, in terms of public testimony. Mm -hmm. um, and any, anything else you want to add, no? Christine? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, we just so appreciate all your support and help. No, thank yeah. you. And at this time, this hearing is uh, adjourned. Okay.